Good evening, one and all, and welcome to episode 216 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, as I go through all of the different buttons to make sure that everything is working properly and look at the tablet to make sure that things are coming through, which they seem to be. Who's going to get the first comment? Nobody yet. You haven't got a comment. So, as you can see from the video description and from what is sitting here next to me, this is going to be a, an episode devoted to a scent that I don't really think we talk about very much uh, amongst us fragrance enthusiasts. Eric gets the first comment. Well done. Hi, Eric. Hello. But it is celebrating its... Uh, wow, this will be interesting, says Leah. It is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year, and it is, of course, as you can see, Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue from 2001, composed by, and I think we forget this too often, composed by none other than Olivier Cresp. So before we spray it, and before we smell it, I should say please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos, and do please also consider supporting my work on Coffee. And also, 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 if I can remember to do my thing properly, um, check out Scent Explore, uh, which is the um, event being organised for early December by the uh, New York-based fragrance critic Max Forty, because it may be something uh, that you may well find interesting for you that you may want to sign up to. If you haven't done so already, I suspect that if you're watching this video, you're the type of person that has probably already signed up to Scent Explore. Anyway, this is a video in which for the next 10-15 minutes or so, I really want to hear from you and your experiences of this scent, because I should imagine that most of you out there will have smelt this, I think. Um, there we go. We've already got one comment from Kazizi saying, I remember it was a kind of unwritten rule amongst my sister's friends when this came out that only the pretty girls were allowed to wear this. That's the kind of story I want. OK, we've set the bar high with the light blue stories. Um, Eric says, my mother used to wear light blue and I abhorred it. I switched her to Jardin sur le Nil. Why did you not like it? Because... Okay, we've started well because this is. I wanted this episode to be more about me reading out your comments than me talking about the um, the perfume. Even though I will, I will um, spray it and I will smell it. Very rainy in the northeast of England too, says Stephen. A real marmite fragrance. This one says Andy. Um, tell me more. Why do you think it's a marmite? Gabriella says love light blue. Can you try and can you try and explain why? Um, so. This has stuck around. I think if a modern perfume has been around for 20 years, we can say that it has stood the test of time. The mother-in-law loves light blue, says Stephen. Um, is, is, is this a good thing, dare I ask? My ex-girlfriend used to wear it, says Lord Charfield. Is that a good thing? I don't know, you, you need to give me more detail here. Um, it's kind of become the accepted thing to, to 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 rubbish this to say that it's silly and insubstantial and you know cheap uh, aim those sorts of you know you you, you, you know you, you know what i'm saying you know kind of sort of cheap fragrance on which we shouldn't spend our hard earned money but i i don't know i think i think there is more to it and i think the people who enjoy it um, are on to something. Um, and also technically I find it interesting. So uh, Gabriella says it's fresh, citrusy, woody, clean, easy to wear. Light blue intense I really like, says Terry. Right, so I've just sprayed it. And by the way, this is a, this is a pretty modern recent sample. I have no idea if it's been reformulated. This one I think is, yeah, it's from this year. It, I, I got it this year. Because easy says it smells great. So what do we get here? And I think this is I think this is why Cresp's work here is um it is fascinating because it somehow manages to achieve a, quite a rare balance in perfumery between citrus and wood with both of them being more convincing than you think they're going to be. 
and you you smell it and you don't you don't quite you can't I, well I don't think anyway I can't quite plump for whether this is a citrus scent or a wood scent and what is remarkable about it technically is that it maintains that balance all the way through to the base. Eric says, technically very interesting, but gosh, it just rankles me. Well, the, yes, I suppose if it, if it just does that to you, um, then you can't help it. I think the scent that does that to me is Calvin Klein Escape for Men, because I can kind of get that it's quite interesting, and it's certainly very, very uh, distinctive. Escape for Men, I mean, you, you, you knew who was wearing Escape for Men, uh, and very, very long-lasting, tenacious, you know, diffusive, all the rest of it, but... <laughs> I could. I have a bottle in my collection because I think it's one of these scents that you just need to have a bottle of in your collection. But I, I struggle. I struggle to. I think. I think I find it easier to smell Italie Vaud uh magnificent secretions than I do Escape for Men. Um, what I also find interesting. I'm not a huge fan of light blue for men, but I think this, the light blue that's supposedly for women actually makes a more interesting masculine than and then light blue for men because light blue for men the last time i smelt it i just thought okay you know we, we we've had this before this is really really generic whereas this as a scent for men is doing something interesting because there's definitely a floral note in there i'm smelling it now and i'm almost thinking you know orange blossom narrowly maybe that's the link between the citrus and the woods um but it's got it's got substance to it and yet it feels very very light and sheer it's got intelligence to it and yet it doesn't feel especially forced um i I'm, i've never been a fan of the name because i don't particularly think of it as being blue or marine or sea-like or sky-like and it's also it's, it's not true to say that it's light i think if they had gone um, for a word that somehow conveyed translucency um that might have been better. Uh, comments from you. Um, where are we? Lord Charfield says, it was a bit of a cheapie that she got from Home Bargains. Okay, so this is going back to, who did you say it was? Oh, your ex-girlfriend. Uh, but it was pretty pleasant from what I recall. You're a, you're, uh, I'm going to come back to your comment, your question about Acro. Eric said, oh no, we've read that one. Kazizi says, if you grew up or remember the early 90s, it suits the era, in my opinion. Yes, and yet we don't talk about it um, so much because, um, although you don't mean the early 90s, do you? Because it's not that old, right? It's only 20 years old. Um, we, we, don't talk, we don't talk about it as much as we talk about things like Angel or uh, L'Odyssee. Um, have you tried Light Blue Intense for Men, says Terry? If I have, it's been a long time and I can't remember it very Why Do you like it? Uh, Rich says, do you think they named it with flankers in mind? That's a good point, actually. They may well have. Such a departure from the famous red cap, says Kazizi. Uh, Gabriella says, this is between 1990 and 2000s vibe to me. Slightly sweet, soft florals, dihydromersonal and clean base. With which I would agree 100%. Uh, Kristen says, yes, light blue for women is perfect for men. Absolutely. And to go back to your question, Yura, some of you may have seen a rather excited, excitable Instagram video from me uh, last week in which I told, in which I said that I had smelt for the very first time uh, a perfume range that Olivier Cresp has created with his daughter and with his his daughter's husband. And it's called Acro, and they have six fragrances in the collection so far. And as far as first impressions are concerned, my first impression of those six could not have been more positive. So I'm trying to get hold of some samples so that I can share them with them, share them with with you in a video. But um, they were quite special, at, at least as far as first impressions are concerned. I have no idea um, how long they last or how diffusive they are because, as I say, these these were just initial sniffs. But um, they were initial sniffs that made made me want to go into a beyond an initial sniff. I should ask you, Yura, have you tried that line? Um, I love this scent, says Victoria. It's my go-to in hot, humid weather. Uh, Rich says, I think Rulia White has had them acro. Very possible, very possible. Um, I like to acro too, says Eric, except the coffee one. I might need night. 
Acro is great. We've gone off on a tangent here, people. The bottles are wonderful to hold with rounded edges, says Christine. Um, what do you think of the male variant of light blue, says Woozy? I just said, not a huge fan. So, the next time you walk into a department store and you're a little bit dismissive of some of the stuff that is sold there, pick this one up and give it a spritz and remind yourself that it's been around for a while and so your reaction you the, the potential reaction that you may have to thinking that it's 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 cliched and hackneyed actually probably shows you how influential this has been because there are lots and lots of scents that have tried to copy that kind of not quite citrus not quite woody and yet somehow managing to be greater than the sum of its parts feel um, a famous one star fragrance from Luca Turin says woozy yes but five star from lots of other critics so maybe that goes back to what somebody else said earlier on that it is it, it is a marmite scent it's it, it's a fascinating one i think well worthy of um of of your attention and the fact that it's been around for 20 years surely must say something so if you are watching live i will just say please uh tune in tomorrow that's wednesday the 6th of october at 4 p.m uk time for a very special video in which i will be joined by alice dupark see you then thanks for watching <laughs>